All right, I hope everyone's ready for a long one today. Let's have a nice swig of some coffee. Before we start on our big project, let's just research a few things that I'm going to keep here at the start because I'm going to be using them real soon. We can get extra ammo types for our rebar gun. Shatter rebar unlocked. These quartz infused rebars fracture when fired, launching deadly debris in a wide spread. Fix it does not condone the use of such violent methods, so make sure there are no witnesses. Well, that was certainly dark. Stun rebar ammo unlocked. This applies a moderate electric charge to the target, capable of stunning small creatures and moderately delaying larger ones. This is quite, atomically, exciting. That was a physics joke. So now if we hold R, we can actually change out what ammo type we're using. So that'll be nice. Now we're going to go get some steel, and hey, look at this hard drive recipe I got. These are two very good options, but solid steel ingot is a slam pick every time. You get 50% more steel out of what you put in compared to the default recipe. All you have to do is just smelt the ore before you send it to the foundry. And then I get a handful of other pretty decent recipes here. Now, I was going to use some of these in this uh, factory, but I did kind of change gears midway through, so we won't be seeing a lot of these. But iron wire is a pretty good one, and then iron pipes was also in the running, but it was competing against the steel ingot one. With those two, you would be able to make a motor factory using just iron, which is pretty neat. But now we've got all that done. Um, in the future, I'm not going to show off like every single solitary hard drive I got. I'll just let you know if I'm using an alternate recipe in whatever I'm building. Now let's head on off to an area that last video, I believe it was the last one, whichever one I started building the coal at, I mentioned how there was a nearby place full of coal. And one reason why I didn't build the coal generators down there is because there's quite a bit of iron nearby. So I want to reuse that for the steel mill. Also, I was hesitant on going this way because I wanted to get those alternate ammo types to increase my killing power. And I think the game changed a lot of spawns because... Oh, hey, hello there, buddy. If, if you ever think I'm being too cautious, that right there is exactly why. Sometimes an enemy will just appear in front of me. That's not cool. Especially because I seem to recall in this area getting jumped by spiders. Big ones. And I wouldn't uh, do too well if I got jumped by a big one that just appeared in my face like that spitter did. All right, buddy, charge. Yep. Good one. Boss hogs ain't shit. And here we are, our destination. Now, I remember this area also being kind of infested with spiders. I don't know. I guess when they added... The different mob types they like subbed out some spiders to put in some more of the new types because I know I I know I sent my brother here before to build steel because <laughs> I couldn't handle the spiders anyways hey hard drive with no requirements to open it so that's nice just get that going while I set everything up here Now there are four coal nodes here. Three of them are pure and one is just normal. So 
So that's about 420 eh, coal that we can get with our Mark 1 miners, assuming we're not overclocking them, which I'm not doing quite yet. And then there is a iron node nearby, as well as two additional ones also kind of closest. Close-ish. And I'm just taking a look around, you know, before we start putting down the factory. Get one good look at this beauty before it all gets paved over. Okay, so it's not that paved over, but off screen I decided to set up some extra coal power here using the, the normal node, which supplies enough for four, four coal generators, which can be powered by two underclocked water pumps. And then I've installed miners on the three pure nodes and I'm belting them into the bottom floor of this factory here. Now up here we get our first look on the foundry. It has two slots for input. I, I'm digging the serial number here, the hot, the hot AF 8000. Or is that 800? Anyways. So with, oh, that, with what I want to do with the three iron and three coal nodes, by the way, the iron nodes nearby are also pure. Should be enough for, I believe, nine? Five here, four over there, I believe. Yeah. Because we need 40 iron ingots and 40 coal per minute. Generates 60 steel ingots per minute. So each pure node of ore and coal produces enough to power three foundries. And I'm just going to have all the coal and iron come in from one floor below. Seem to be having problems here. There we go. So to start, I'm just gonna set up three of these. I'm not gonna hook up the other uh, rest quite yet. And small gripe. But I don't think you can use the control thing where it'll line up inputs and outputs with conveyor holes, which is kind of a minor annoyance. Just skip all that and then we need to put splitters on each end. I know it says merger. I've reworked my hotbar because the merger splitters and smart splitters all share one spot and you can press E to swap between what type of splitter or merger you're using, kind of like how with belts it switches between the different speeds. So yeah, let's just uh, fix that. And if you hold E, you'll get that selection wheel, so that's kind of useful. Here are the other two coal nodes. I'm gonna belt that right on into here and then we'll need our power.
Now with that all set up, we just need to get the iron, which requires heading right on up here, because the iron is actually above this little area. And if it's driving you crazy that I'm always throwing down a foundation before putting down a ladder even though you don't need a foundation for a ladder, rest assured it annoys me too looking back at it. And talk about a tease, the closest iron node has a giant boulder over it, so I can't put a miner. And a, hey, a Caterium node nearby, that's neat. But okay, whatever, we'll just bring some power up here, because we'll need to do that anyways. And we'll just go find the other nearby nodes. Would you look at that? Another Mercer Sphere. For now, I'm just kind of throwing those on for uh, Dimensional Depots on top of items that I'll probably be using more often, like uh, plates and cables. Comment the description. The voiceless effigy creates bodies in their waves but does not notice the shore. Is our melody not beautiful? Detecting abnormal brainwave activity again. Activating artificial brainwave resonator. Your shallow song has no rhythm. The river erodes our temples without prayers and washes away our scripture without deepening. Consume. I believe this is one of those moments where the scientist would yell, Eureka, but that seems entirely too dramatic. It seems they are somehow organically emulating human speech. Fascinating. Continue exposing yourself to alien artifacts. All right, Ada, slow down. It's such a shame you can't raise and lower a blueprint using the uh, nudge function. Yeah, let me just make sure I'm going the right way. Yep, they're right over there. So why don't we just use our zip, zip liner to get across. Oh god. Okay, let's try that again. Oh hey, there's a Mercer Sphere down there too. But alright, here are the two nodes. Three splitters and two boss hogs. That's uh, quite well defended for some reason. Also, I believe those are out called alpha hogs, but boss hog just sounds so right. There's the rebar. Could be useful in stunning them so you can smack them if you're not getting stuck scrolling. And uh oh dear, this is this is not good. Just need to get away and heal up. Head on back. And equip our Shatter Rebar so it's more like a shotgun. Oh! That's, uh, that's not good. That's a radioactive hog. I don't know why it's down here. It wasn't down here earlier. I mean, I'm sure it's because of the uh, Mercer Sphere, but ooh lord. Let's, uh, what do the kids call it? Fortniting it? When you just build yourself. You know, instead of ducking for cover, you just build a whole house anytime you're threatened. 
<laughs> yeah, just making sure the coast is clear. And instead of zip tying across, let's uh just build ourselves a little a little walking path. And yeah, radioactive hogs, besides the obvious radioactiveness, which means you will constantly take damage just for being near them, unless you have the protective gear, which we don't have access to, they also have a shitload of health, so yeah, that's fun. Anyways, we still got these guys to take care of. How is that one still alive? I just fed it like four port shots worth of of rebar. And it looks like the one up there is bugged out, so we'll just take advantage of its pathfinding. Alright, finally the iron is ours. I'm thinking in future videos, instead of doing this thing where I'm doing the setup in the same video where I'm building the whole factory, I'll just like mix a exploration video with setting up the factory. It'll probably help videos from being an hour and ten minutes long. So alright, let's bring all that iron ore on over to here and time to set up all the smelters for it yes I know I just set down some smart splitters I realized my error eventually wasting all of my AI limiters At this point, I realize, oh, I set up the smart splitters so the things won't actually split because I didn't set them to split right. We got the ore made into ingots, kind of bring everything down to the foundries. Now, as you can see, I had a uh, slightly less elegant thought process in how to bring those over to there, but let's try this instead. Come on, there we go. I could drop that all the way to the ground, but I'm actually going to raise it a bit just so I have like free space on the floor for moving around and possibly driving through if I need to. Oh god, I <laughs> almost missed that.
real fun part with setting up conveyor lists is remembering just how many spots you've moved from the uh, from the hole. No, don't ask me why. I just deleted that. Oh no, I know why. It's because I wasn't I wasn't at the right uh, height. Oh, come on. You don't need to have the belt go down that low. There we go. Alright, finally got all of the iron ingots coming in with the coal. And soon enough, those foundries are going to start spitting out some steel. If they had power. Alright. Next up, what I was going to do was just have them all export up to the ceiling. But then I figured... Okay, they, they come out so much that I can merge them, but I can't merge too many of them because we only have Mark II belts. But, we'll, we'll set this up now for when I do my next plan, which is I'll eventually want to get all these ingots going into a constructor down here just to make things unlock the next milestone. We'll just let it passively create some pipes and beams for later on as well. And feed them into this container. Because I may as well hit the next milestone before doing any serious work. Milestone reached. Improved storage containers and the conveyor belt Mark III provide the obviously necessary tools for improving your current setup. Production speed is of the essence after all. So work hard. Work as if every person you have ever or will ever love is depending solely on the choices that you make. Because they are. Warning. Fix-It psychologists recommend not dwelling on the crushing mental and physical strain of your responsibilities and simply continuing to be productive. Hard work has repeatedly proven to be the best cure for any kind of stress. Now back to work. Well, time to work so much that I'm too busy to think of all the people I loved. So yeah, Mark III belts. They don't just double. You know, from Mark I to, part, to Mark II, it doubled how many items per minute it can hold. But Mark III actually more than doubles. It goes from 120 to 270 items a minute and that means that like our uh our two of the coal nodes and two of the iron nodes can all go on one belt well not together but you know two coal one belt two iron one belt and that also means that i can now combine all of the things 
all the foundries down here onto one belt instead of having to make separate belt lines. Now, of course, my inventory is full, so I got all these dismantled crates around, and instead of freeing up my inventory, I just continue to dismantle. And they're getting in the way, so that's fun. now being produced and brought up to the next floor. I do believe I got six of our foundries set up now. The last three are waiting until I can free up that one other pure iron node. And now we've got this set of steel going up and on this side of the second floor we're going to set up I believe eight constructors for steel pipes and then on the other side it'll be five constructors for steel beams and that'll use up all the uh, all the uh, steel that we are producing Now to continue talking about Mark III belts, they are actually great. It's a great step up from Mark II, not just because of the fact they use they uh, move so much more stuff, but there's also like it's far easier to make steel beams. All you need is steel ingots and make steel beams compared to needing to make reinforced plates, which needs plates and screws or what have you. There's also less opportunity cost because like iron plates are used in several other items that need to be made and they're also used in manufacturers or uh, sorry uh, assemblers and not to say that steel beams themselves aren't used in other things it's just I don't know I never felt like I've had a shortage of steel beams as often as I've had a shortage of reinforced pipes or uh, reinforced plates and this is me trying to make everything nice before ultimately going you know what don't matter Okay, I didn't connect the second set, my bad. But now I'm upgrading all the belts so I can connect the second set onto everything. And even if I'm not using something that requires 270 belt or 270 items on a belt, I may as well just, just use the Mark III belts. There's really no reason to do one or two unless you like explicitly need something to be uh you know you you want to divide a belt and you only need 60 coming out on one side so you'll put a mark one to ensure that only 60 goes on there instead of having to wait for it to over stack and then i've also rejiggered this as you can see i used the road barrier trick to have it look like it's hanging off the side of the cliff and then I'll just go ahead and move the other pure node ingots onto that one belt and then for the other side of the factory where all the foundries are at I'm just gonna have them go up into this particular lift
And what was a nice surprise, actually, on the bottom floor is that the way I've had the, uh, the lift hole set up is they actually perfectly match the, the opposite foundry. So they also cleanly connect into these splitters that are down below. Now steel beams are produced slower and like require more steel. Which is why I'm only building 5 compared to the 8 that pipes are getting, even though ultimately steel pipes are like way more valuable right now, since I need to use them for belts. But that's fine, whatever. Like, like I said, this all cleanly divides into the steel we're able to produce. And speaking of, time to start unlocking some other milestones. Milestone reached after several pioneers started exhibiting traumatic responses to power blackouts. Fix it developed mitigation tools recommended by your local therapist. Power storages can hold excess power to delay or prevent blackouts in the eventuality that your factory's power consumption exceeds production. To simplify, these are rechargeable batteries. Power towers carry power lines for significantly greater distances than poles, facilitating factory expansion and exploitation of this environment for the good of Fixit and humanity. So this is a pretty nifty milestone to unlock. We can get power storage units that'll start like absorbing the excess power we generate and it will store it for use that if we ever go over our power usage instead of the fuse being blown it'll start using power from those batteries and you even get a little notification to let you know that you are currently using battery power so it's nice to use it if, if you wanna you know if you're building something and it's like oh hey you're using your battery power and you know oh I need to stop what I'm doing and start increasing my, pa my uh, power now these are actually the first time I'm interacting with these things, these power towers, and they rock. As you you saw the uh, the distance I was able to place the second platform, and you can also zip tie across them. But what's nice is that since it's not a pole, you don't bounce up against the pole as you go past it. If I build a second tower connecting to this one further ahead I'll be able to go across all three towers without having to jump around a pole so yeah very nice and hey there is a crash site there also you may have briefly seen it but to the right there's also a summer sloop on one of the nearby uh what are these mesas Welp. <laughs> oh god, and I set the ladder up slightly too far away. Oh, hello, buddy. They've built that ladder bit too high, whatever. I got the high ground, buddy. God, I need more inventory space. And before continuing with the, the factory, because there is one more thing I want to build here. And we only get it once we unlock this milestone. 
Milestone reached. The Miner Mark II allows extraction of resources from nature to fix it at twice the speed of the Mark I model. Miners can be directly upgraded to Mark II without removing the Mark I model, just like conveyor belts and other upgradable infrastructure. Unfortunately, setting up the production of advanced steel parts and project part number three, automated wiring, will not be as easy. Every moment you delay reduces the chances of saving humanity. I will not show you the predictions, it would only demotivate you. Anyways. <laughs> oh, hey, look, cool. I got iron pipe again. Let's go ahead and grab that. Anyways, uh, oh, looks like I'm gonna unlock something else here, too. May as well, I guess. Milestone reached. By adding hypertube entrances at both ends of hypertubes, pioneers can achieve two-way travel between locations. They are also, error, percent safer than jump pads. You dreamed of moving across factories like valued resources, such as rocks and water, and fix it listen to your dreams. We watched them. We took extensive notes. Hypertubes. Because fix it makes pioneers closely monitored dreams come true. Hypertubes are kind of cool, but they're kind of redundant now that power towers are a thing. Research completed. Black powder recipe unlocked. New sulfur research available. So yeah, we can now make, uh, or we'll be able to make explosives soon. Research completed. Experimental power generation research options are now available. These may enhance performance of other fuel sources. So a neat thing, well, I'll explain that a little bit later. Well, actually, you know what? A neat thing is that we can unlock a uh, compact coal and turbo fuel through the MAM by using a hard drive for each one. Detonator and Basic Nobilisk unlocked. Most obstacles can be cleared with the Basic Nobilisk. It is most effective against organic material and is able to destroy small boulders and porous rock. Deployed Nobilisks will stick to the first solid surface they touch and cue on the Universal Detonator. If you do not recall the order in which you deployed the Nobilisks, remember Fixit does not take responsibility for any harm caused due to human error, even if those errors are genetic. Rude. But yeah, in the past you would have to research a hard drive and hope it has a turbo fuel recipe. And Coffee Stain realized that turbo fuel was kind of like a very special recipe. So they just made it an option you can get in the MAM. But yeah, now we can blow some stuff up. Hmm, I wonder if there was something that I needed to blow up earlier. Let's go for a ride. Hey, what's up, Katerium? Oh, God. Note, you cannot pick up a Noblest that you have thrown. So, hey, now we can mine this Katerium node normally. No more using the portable miners. But also, all these, uh, what my brother and I affectionately call poo gas rocks, they will also stop being a, uh, a threat. You know, soon I can actually throw. Yep. No more gas. This is very nice. In early access, they were... You could not destroy them. So they were just something you had to deal with. Now, there are some areas where it seems that gas just generates even if you destroy the nearby rocks. Which is kind of annoying. But hey... Better than nothing. And now we can finally exploit this node. And 
And I'm still going to be using Mark 1 Miners just because I didn't plan on using a more powerful Miner. And if I haven't explained it yet, Mark 2, it literally just doubles. So instead of 120, each one would be producing 240. But that's okay. This now means that if later on I need some ore and it's near this area, I can just upgrade these to Mark II and then belt off the excess ore to whatever other project I'm doing. And now that we've got that going, I've belted in the coal from the third miner, or from the third coal miner that has been not doing anything thus far. And now we've got the third set of copper ingots, which means finally the re remaining three foundries can be put to use. And then we'll have full production of steel pipes and steel beams. But note that everything's kind of stopped for now until because I've got everything kind of backed up. I was waiting for stuff to come in to unlock more milestones. And that last foundry is just going up in its own thing because I believe it'll saturate the belts. But also over here, I set up a smart splitter to sh shoot over its excess steel over to here just in case. But yeah, there's the constructor getting its own special income of steel. Now for the final item, we're going to bring everything on up top. Those are the containers that I was using to store the production while I wait for things to get unlocked. My original plan with this factory was to also produce uh, the versatile frames, which you can see I've got 780 of almost. We'll get on that in a minute. But then there was also uh, something called rotors, or no, not rotors, staters. But uh, I decided to not do all that here. That would have been too much. Instead, what I'm going to have up here on the final floor is encased industrial beams. Those just need steel beams and concrete. And then everything is going to come out on this one belt over here. Gonna get the lift that has the steel beams on it have it raised up a bit higher but the pipes are just gonna go straight on into the conveyor hole right here and then a merger for the encased beams to merge onto this belt don't worry there is a reason why I have all these items going onto one shared belt And it's going to be real fun waiting for all the buildup of eight constructors for the pipes and then five more for the beams to start emptying out. But anyways, now we're going to belt over these steel pipes to here. Going to set a merger even though I need a splitter. Eventually I'll start learning to press E. Now we just need to get the concrete on over. And I was going to originally like do the molded steel beams recipe I got, because after all there's concrete nearby. But it things were just getting kind of complicated and on the whole, this factory is mostly just to get me not only milestone unlocks, but also just a steady stream of building material. We'll save the, you know, hardcore maximize the items per minute for more complicated items. And now back in this little room right here. Oh wait, whoops. Almost forgot. I need to also split the the uh, beams to then merge onto the shared belt. All 
right, and in this room I've got a whole bunch of constructors set up. I think I got like six. I want to set up a whole bunch of splitters to feed all of them. Because we're going to be needing a lot of concrete. Where are we getting the limestone for all this? Oh, just a little bit up the uh, side over here. We got ourselves a pure limestone node. Setting up a Mark II Miner, and look at that, 240. Perfect for our new belts. Now we see to bring it on up to that construction area. Time to do the little road barrier trick once again. Oh god, uh, yeah, straight belt doesn't quite work as well. I mean, technically it works, it just looks absolutely silly. Oh man, clipping, can't have that. You can have some clipping, but not too much. Alright, it's still clipping, but it's clipping in the back, so I won't notice it as easily. Alright, got every single one of those set up. Time to belt it all to that assembler. be nice once I start getting more power coming in then I could just start slugging all these and reduce everything by half but yeah 36 concrete a minute it is these are very hungry item consumption just keeps going up the further we go in so Expect the factories to get even bigger. Just making sure everything's working right. Now to have everything go down to the ground floor. So originally I was going to have everything on its own belt, but I decided to change my mind when I realized I would have to run three separate belts in this direction. So first thing I'm going to do here is upgrade this normal node to a Mark II belt, uh, rework its belting, and then I'm just going to siphon off the uh, extra coal over to here. We're going to build something that I'm surprised I'm even going to build, but hey, I guess there is, this is a good point to 
bring up the good parts of using vehicles in Satisfactory. So as you can see in the blueprint, there are two inputs and two outputs. Uh, that one single one further off on the left is a fuel input. Let's talk about the bad things of vehicles in Satisfactory. They need fuel. So that would mean in this case I would have to set off some of my precious coal to fuel a truck instead of using it for, say, power. Fixit reminds you to drive vehicles accurately through a truck station's dock area while recording a path. This ensures it will connect properly once everything is automated. The truck station can be set to load or unload, and can also refuel vehicles. Unlike some pioneers, truck stations care about saving humanity. Damn, laying on some shade, huh? I care about saving humanity, stupid trucks. But once the coal starts coming in, there was a little section for fuel on the truck station. Also, like Ada said, we could set them to load or unload uh, below the inventory here in the menu. Now we just need a vehicle to actually drive it. Tractors can use any type of fuel and have a self-driving feature, much like Pioneers, only more reliable. While driving you can record a path to automate vehicle resource transportation. Unlike early self-driving vehicles, tractors will not spy on you. Your employee data is already fully subject to other means of surveillance. Another dig at Elon Musk and the Tesla. <laughs> But yeah, different types of fuel will have different burn rates for vehicles. So hey, let's give this thing a test spin. Beep, beep. Oh, oh Jesus. Well, uh, hmm. Anyways. So we got one truck station that's taken in all of our resources. Don't worry if you want to see some driving. We'll be seeing some shortly. But now what I'm going to do is, using the all iron factory nearby, I'm going to use its bottom floor as a sorter for the steel mills product. And uh, make absolutely sure that there's, you know, solid foundation here. Another annoying thing about trucks in Satisfactory, they are very prone to bouncing. Oh, also they require power too. Each truck station, that is. So that's always fun. So it's a case of setting up a truck where you need to make sure it has fuel, set up its truck stations, power them, and then you also need to actually record its uh, drive path. On the plus side though, hey, you don't have to worry about laying down belts. You just drive to the destination and set it to, uh, you know, where to go to load and unload. Alright, now for the separation here. I'm going to set up a smart splitter. And it's in here is when all those resources from the steel mill will then separate out into their own belts. And I'm kind of being a adult here on how I'm setting things up. I do want the steel beam to go right, and in case beams to go left, I want the center to be overflow. Overflow doesn't have to be an item that is explicitly defined. Overflow will also count for other items that aren't defined in the splitter. So the steel pipes will go through that middle part as overflow. And likewise, it wants the beams and in case beams get full, they'll also go down that middle part. So now I've got belt set up to separate out the steel pipe, steel beams, and encased beams, and then I have an overflow section, so any extras will then uh, not clog up the belts. And I do want everything on a separate belt going into my item mall, just so for, for things that I plan on making a bunch of, I want to say I've already talked about this, but I guess I'll just say it bears repeating. I expect to have like 
a whole lot of steel pipes, a whole lot of steel beams coming in. Let's say I'm only getting like 30 of each. That's 60 on one belt. And while sure I have Mark III belts now, now that I have a capacity of 270 items, still 60 is taking up that 270 just for the steel pipes and steel beams and never mind, you know, iron plates, iron rods, encased beams, reinforced plates. So for items that I plan on having a like more than like double digit made, I want it to be on its own belt. That way it leaves the main belt that's kind of sneaking through my my uh, mall to be for items that I'm only producing like at most five per minute. Anyways, time to do the very fun part about trucks. We're gonna set up a recording. And here we go. As you can see, it'll show arrows in the direction that the vehicle will be traveling. I wanna stop here for a couple of seconds to give it time to unload all of its cargo. Later on, I'll come back to that station and set it to unload instead of it being set to load at default. And now we see to drive over to the other station. All right, full speed. Oh, God damn it. Oh, come on, you asshole. Okay, let's stop the recording because that will be recorded by the truck. The truck will arbitrarily stop there if I kept this recording. Now you can get out and interact with the nodes, but it's such a pain in the ass that I would rather just completely s scratch a recording and start over again. But yeah, hey, vehicle driving, I can dig it. Oh, come the fuck on, you've respawned already? And so yeah, the truck will drive ahead before reversing and then going back. But you know what? Whatever. I don't care. Now there's trees in the way. Thank God there hasn't been little rocks in the ground because I've also done had times where I've hit a tiny rock and rock it up like 50 feet into the sky. And then the recording just has a truck staying in that spot for like 20 seconds while I, you know, shoot up and then land. And now we just need to complete the loop. So yeah, to reiterate, trucks, perks, you can put a whole bunch of stuff on there. You know, a belt, well okay, it's kind of a loaded thing. A belt will only hold 270 items per minute. A truck can theoretically hold more than that. But when it comes time to take things out of the truck station, it's still going to be stuck at whatever belt speed you got. A uh, fun fact, originally truck stations only had a single output and input, and they've since doubled it, so you can get double your belt's worth of input and output, I guess. A problem with that, though, is that if you have two belts, it, they take from the bottom right of the, of the inventory, meaning that you'll have one item being taken out at two different belts. So either, if those aren't being separated, then you need to combine them later, which means they'll be over your belt output. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to set up the a longer wait. 10 seconds is actually way overkill, but it's fine. It gives more time for the belts to disperse its material. But yeah, and that also means that instead of running either one long belt or multiple belts, you can just do it on one vehicle. Downsides, you gotta fuel it, you gotta power the stations, and then you gotta record the drive path, which, if it's a long drive path, gives you more chances to have mistakes, which might require you to re-record a, a path. I remember one time having a path that took like, maybe, it was maybe like five or six minutes, and one way. And then on the way back, I hit something and rock it up and had her start all over again. But yeah, really, that's 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 the main complaint about using vehicles. They've also been... Oh! Watch where you're driving, buddy. 
Oh god. But um, they they have been improved. I'm probably working through some early access trauma where they often would crash and get stopped and get stuck on things. But now they've like kind of hacked them to where if a vehicle is like stuck, it'll eventually just go into ghost mode. And even if ghost mode doesn't work, it'll just straight up teleport to the next node in its path. So there's that at least. And here we are, three containers, all for our brand new merchandise. Getting those steel beams in is a godsend. I've also got some going downward. I guess it's time to finally explain where we've been getting all those versatile framework things. I don't think I've actually explained this whole system at all. Oh uh, yeah, I have splitters on some items that are feeding downstairs. And then those are feeding into assemblers that are then making the items that go to the elevator. So the steel beams I have coming down here to make the versatile framework along with those modular frames. So that's nice, just give it some time and eventually that'll be all done. All we'll need left is the high speed wiring. And then uh, I try to work a smart splitter into here to uh, overflow the versatile framework because again, good points. And since I'm going to keep getting beams and modular frames, may as well. I do have some problems with it. I'll eventually cut, but rest assured, I do have those going into overflow once the elevator gets its 1000 needed. And now for the remaining video, it's just going to be replaying messages and research options. Research completed. Crystal oscillator recipe unlocked. New quartz research available. We won't be able to automate oscillators for a while because they need something in the next phase, which is annoying. Research completed. Purple power slugs seem to be near the end of their life cycle and have a significant amount of potential energy stored. It is a good thing Fixit does not waste. Purple power slugs can now be processed into power shards. Research shows potential for processing planetary nutrients for pioneer benefit. Nutritional inhaler research available. Nutritional inhaler recipe unlocked. Using this inhaler will restore health and also gives your skin a radiant glow that is connected to well-being and probably not radioactivity. Therapeutic inhaler recipe unlocked. It smells like fried breakfast induced cardiac arrest, but surprisingly, it restores you to full health. That's, uh, lovely. But hey, now that we also got steel pipes coming in, we can make some more SAM fluctuators and dimensional depots. I believe those also needed steel pipes. I was just running off whatever I found out in the wild. Potential for harnessing alien energy completed. Fixit has identified two development tracks requiring additional research to integrate summer sloops safely and efficiently into Fixit technology. The loop organ contains scripture, contains instruments to compose symphonies of root and rod and recycling. Shrines to evolution and revolution. And let's unlock another milestone. Milestone reached. Blueprints reduce repetitive building tasks. 
Further optimizing your progression towards saving Earth, with its beautiful ecosystems, abundant natural resources, and sunsets over frolicking puppies and kittens. The Blueprint Designer allows you to build and combine structures once and then duplicate that configuration effortlessly. Any complaints about the spatial restrictions will only reveal your own inefficiencies. Damn, coffee stain throwing shade at people who were complaining that the blueprint thing was too small. Blueprints, uh, I've read a lot of people having bugs with them, so uh, I've been holding off on using those. So maybe way later. Manual Depot Uploader Unlocked. Storage dimension and pocket dimension now connected both ways and stable. Parts can now be uploaded to the storage dimension directly from the inventory. Note, the storage dimension now understands the boundaries of the pocket dimension and recognizes the distinction between matter belonging to the pioneer's inventory and matter belonging to the pioneer. The window within a window within the shallows within the deep, curling around itself separately, echoes strangely. I'm sure strange is the correct term for what this must feel like to you. So yeah, we can now upload stuff we pick up without having to belt it into a dimensional depot, which is very nice. Speaking of, how about we can hold two stacks of items now? That'd be nice. Dimensional expansion increased to 200%. Refining manipulation of SAM allows us to now deconstruct non-living matter down to its atomic components in one dimension, and store it in basic bound states in another. We do not resonate with the tribute song. Do not worship at the window. Desecrate our temple gifts. This shall a serenade a sour insult. My intention was not to encroach, if that is what upsets you, nor was it to dispose of material I do not waste. All right, that was a big one. If you manage to get this far, you are uh, quite patient. Later.